Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Mary Candy here today we are back on the channel with another first impressions video and today we're going to be taking a look at the newest Japanese set, Miracle Twins. So I think technically this hasn't come out in Japan yet um, at the time of filming, but they usually post their sets kind of ahead of time, that way players can see all the cards and sets. So they have pretty much everything here outside of like the secret rares and full arts and you know some of the high rarity stuff. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to be taking a look at this set, and this is kind of an important one to take a look at just because this is going to help shape our unified mindset that we're going to be getting in August. And something important to note as well is that the rotation this year will happen before this set actually is legal for play. So that means the format's actually going to be Ultra Prism all the way up to Unified Minds, which is important to note because we are losing things like Double Color Synergy, Ultra Ball, a lot of staples that we you know, kind of have been relying on for the longest time. So uh, we're going to have to be looking at these cards kind of through that lens and, uh, you know, not having some of these cards really does impact the playability of some of these. So it's just something to keep in mind as we do go through, like, all these cards. And I did take a quick peek through this set whenever Poker Beach first posted the set list. I kind of just briefly scanned through just to make sure there were no GXs or kind of like major players that I was... I hadn't seen yet, but by and large, this is going to be kind of my first impressions of all these cards. I haven't really put too much thought into the vast majority of these, so we'll have to see what we're going to be getting here in Miracle Twins. So let's dig in and see what cards that they're going to be giving us here. So we have a Yenma and Yen Mega. Yen Mega, of course, Yen Tack with triple colorless energy, so that's good. So 100 and discard and energy. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. The discard effect, pretty relevant since you were probably attaching triple acceleration to this. The fact that we're losing choice ban kind of bumps me out in regards to this card though, just because uh, against GXs, you're only going to be hitting for 200. And outside of non-tag team basics, there's not too many GXs. You're really going to be hitting for weakness with this thing. Uh, if we still have choice ban, this might be a little bit better because then this could be a genuinely viable like Ditto Prism target against grass weak tag teams so um it's still a potential consideration just because it is all based on colorless energy and you could make this kind of a splashable tech but since we're losing choice band i think this card gets a bit worse probably uh, i don't know it could pop up as a tech but doesn't seem too amazing though Let's see we have our boy celebi here always happy to see new celebi cards but let's see um, just for a grass, de-evolve, one of your opponents evolve Pokemon by having them shuffle the highest stage card on it into your opponent's deck. Okay, so this is actually one of the few kind of like de-evolution effects we're going to have in the new format. We're going to be losing uh, Shining Jirachi and the Porygon Z, I believe it is. I believe Porygon Z de-evolves your opponent, if I remember correctly. I, th I think that's right. <laughs> that shows you how relevant our devolution cards we've had uh, in, in the past format have been. <laughs> they haven't been too impactful. Uh, so it's going to be one of the few like effects like this that we're going to have. The fact that this is Grass Energy, though, is a, kind of a bummer. Uh, Espeon EX previously was kind of pretty good because it was just a colorless energy. And it was pretty splashable, uh, you know, no matter what the deck is that you want to put in. Grass Energy is going to make this card a bit more limited. But shuffling into your opponent's deck is a bit better than Espeon EX is just putting it back into their hands. So that's a little bit better. But unfortunately, I have to say, uh, you know, Evolutions don't look to be that great even after rotation. For the foreseeable future, this does look to be like kind of a basic dominating metagame, which is such a bummer. I really can't stand the game when it gets to these types of stages. Uh, so unfortunately, Celebi probably won't see play as well just for that reason alone. So it's a card you'll kind of have to keep in mind though, just because this is uh, kind of an important effect. If we ever get a good spread archetype uh, that can abuse grass energy, you will have to kind of keep this in mind. But for the short term, probably won't be a great card. We have a Levani Evolution Line. This was one of the cards that did get revealed previously before the rest of the set got revealed. But let's take a look at Stage 2. Your Grass Pokemon take 40 less damage from your opponent's attacks after applying Weakness and Resistance, but you can only use one of these abilities at a time. So if you get multi multiple of these Levanis in play, this will not stack, which is kind of a bummer. But realistically, you're probably only going to get like one of these in play most of the time anyway, so probably not a huge deal. So, uh, I mean, you can still get this out with rare candies. You can use the Rowlet uh, Lone Executor GX Tag Team that we're probably going to be getting in the same set when it releases internationally. So you can get it set up. Um, and there are a few cards that might want to abuse something like this. Of course, the new Rowlet Lone Executor, Selby Venusaur, Buzzle Feromosa. Just not sure if those decks really are going to commit the space to them. 
uh, just because, you know, fire's already pretty good, <laughs> and uh, especially in the case of Buzzwole, Feromosa, and Selby Venusaur, those decks are, I think, as good as they are because they are very streamlined. They don't need a lot of moving pieces like Rare Candies and Evolutions. They just kind of need their attackers, and that's about it, and they can get going. So, not really sure if this card is that great. Let's see. Uh, let's take a look at the pre-evolutions. That does make a difference sometimes. So you have a Sawaddle. Okay, it's like a call for family. So you just search it out for two Sawaddles, put them onto your bench. So that seems pretty good if we are going to play this. Let's see. Any damage done to this Pokemon? Reduced by 10. Okay, yeah. We definitely, I think, will prefer the Sprout Swaddle here. And Swadloon, just a 30 reduction. That's okay. So pre-evolutions, uh, the... Swaddle's pretty good, but not enough of a difference to really impact, I think, this thing's playability. So, probably not that great of a card. So, here we have Amoongus. This was another card that did get revealed, uh, you know, ahead of this entire set leak or set reveal. But, stage one ability, once during your turn before you attack, whenever you play a Pokemon with Spore from your hand into play, your opponent's active is now Sleep and Poisoned. And then the attack for a DCE, but remember we do lose DCE, so this will most likely be like triple acceleration energy if you are going to power this thing up. 20 plus 70 if your opponent's active is poison. So not a great attacker, but the ability is kind of relevant here. So uh, if we do look at the Fungus, Fungus does actually have Spore. So uh, we will have to kind of look at the card pool and see if there's any other important Pokemon that have this attack that are good potential partner Pokemon, uh, but definitely Sp uh, the Spore on Fungus is going to be kind of the main one. But that seems kind of annoying. I mean, yeah, getting, like, Sleep and Poison is actually pretty good in the new format just because we lose Guzma, we lose Escape Rope. I think we do it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we still have Switch because it got, a like, an old re old art reprint in Celestial Storm. But um, our switching effects definitely get much worse and much uh, fewer and far between. So status conditions might actually be decent. But uh, the fact that you're only going to be limited to a couple of these abilities per game is pretty annoying, I do have to say. It's going to be really clunky to reuse these different Funguses throughout a game, so um, not a huge fan of this for that reason. We do have a new Breloom that kind of pairs well with this, which we'll get to uh, in the fighting Pokemon as well, but really just don't like how you're only, well, we'll have to see what other Spore Pokemon they're at, but, but assuming the Fungus is like our only real option for using this ability, that is kind of a bummer. So we'll have to see how this does. But really don't like that the fact that this is limited to whenever you bench a Pokemon with Spore. That is kind of the annoying part. So not a big fan of that. Maybe the Breloom has Spore. I honestly forget. We'll have to see. But might be a cool card. Like I said, SAS conditions do get a bit better. Uh, here we have our first tag team, the... <laughs> Uh, complete meme Psyduck and Slowpoke GX. This is such a ridiculous Pokemon that they're printing here. Um, I honestly forget what the card does though. But it's 250 HP. Let's see. We do lose Aquapatch. Something important to point out when talking about water Pokemon in this new format. But let's see. First attack, double water. Discard any number of supporters from your hand and the attack is 40 for each discarded. So that's kind of annoying because you're going to have to run probably a decent amount of supporters in order to reliably have them and to be able to like recycle them is going to be kind of a challenge we do have pow pad and the there is a new lapras as well i believe that will allow us to recycle the new misty supporter but this seems pretty much like a gimmick uh if i were to see one definitely i think we have much better tag teams we could potentially use the fact that's two water is also kind of bad uh since we don't have aqua patch but we do have quagsire still to be fair and the GX attack, C, double water, flip a coin of heads, does 100 more. But if you have 6 extra energy, flip 10 coins and do 100 more for each head. So this, yeah, this card I think is pretty much trash. <laughs> I mean, there are cards that synergize with it, but it just seems like a, pretty much a meme here. And yeah, this is actually the Lapras I was talking about. So you can put uh, the new Misty supporter from your discard back into your hand every turn. So that's kind of the whole combo here. I forget what the Misty card does, but it's, you know, you play that, get it back with Lapras. We have Pow Pad. Uh, we have a number of other supporters, of course, just in your deck naturally. So that's the whole combo, but I think we have much better tag teams. I guess we will say it is a water type for the Slowpoke and Psyduck. <laughs> that's like the one good thing it does have going for it. 
Uh, next up we have Luminion. I think this is our first Luminion in a pretty long time. I don't remember the last time I saw this Pokemon actually get printed. Let's see, DCE 50. Again, not really DCE, probably triple acceleration energy. You may move an energy from your opponent's active to their bench. Not a terrible effect, but not too great. Basculin, another kind of old Pokemon we haven't seen in a while. Let's see, there's 20 times the number of Basculin in play to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So you're doing maximum 80 damage snipe. Really not too terrible, I guess. Uh, getting these into play might be kind of a challenge, though, because we are losing Nest Ball, we're losing Brooklet Hill. So we're going to have Elm and, like, Pokemon communication. But other than that, options of finding all of these Baskins is going to be a little bit annoying. So it doesn't seem that great. Let's see. We have a new Caracosta evolution line here. And does require fighting energy, which is actually pretty cool because you can hit things like uh, Rushy's Art for weakness and also things like Picarom as well, which is pretty cool. So 160 HP. This is going to be, of course, one of the like fossil evolution lines. We do have to keep that in mind. Uh, the ability, as long as this Pokemon is in play, each of your opponent's tool cards has no effect. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. It's like a Lysander Labs just built into your Pokemon. After rotation, though, I'm not sure how good this actually is. That's the issue. Just because we do have a skateboard still in the format. But outside of that, and we do have another new like retreating method. We're going to get the U-turn board uh, probably coming in the same set as well when it releases internationally. Uh, we'll have those, but I mean, you don't really see a skateboard in every deck as it is. So, and we don't have choice ban anymore. So uh, this, I think this ability gets much worse at in the post-rotation format as opposed to the pre-rotation format. But nevertheless, still shutting off your um, your opponent's escape words is going to be pretty good just because Jirachi is still going to be a really strong card after rotation, I believe. So, uh, the abilities, it, it's pretty good. But See the attack fighting, double colorless, 80 plus 20 more for each colorless energy in your opponent's retreat cost. That's okay. The attack cost is pretty bad, however. Like, since we're losing DCE, I really don't like these type of attacks anymore. Just because now, if we do want to get something like this set up, we're going to have to attach a fighting, and then triple colorless being discarded every turn forces us to always stay committing extra energy to our active and never allows us the time to set up another attacker. Unless the rest of this deck that Caracosta would be in would be like a single attachment deck, I don't really see you streaming this attacker throughout the course of a game. So this is kind of a relevant attack though just because pretty sure we will knock out a uh, Reshizard uh, with this thing because I'm pretty sure Reshizard has three retreat costs that's what 120 40 so we can knock out Reshizard one hit which is good Picarom has a two retreat cost so we actually can knock out both of the major tag teams in the current format with this thing so that's actually pretty good it's just getting this thing up and running is going to be the issue and it depends what else is in the deck with it, because the rest of the deck, I think, would need to be single attachment attackers. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to consistently stream these every turn, uh, since you're forced to always discard triple acceleration. So this is a cool card. Going to keep an eye out on it. Uh, definitely seems like a, like a half-decent card, though. Uh, Dupider. Or I'm sorry, uh, Araquin is the evolution of Dupider. See, choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, switch with their active, then 80, and then the cost of each defending Pokemon's attacks and retreat cost is one more. That's actually like kind of interesting. Issue, of course, is yet again, we've lost double colorless energy, so this attack can't really be powered up that easily. So that seems a bit worse. Uh, go Lysopod. This is another card that got revealed a little bit early before the rest of the set. Do you remember this? Uh, has this ability if this Pokemon has two or less energy attached to it, uh, no retreat cost. So pretty good, just because you know if you have if your opponent tries to like bring up your Golisopod preemptively before you get it set up, and you don't have all this energy on it, you can just you know retreat for free, which is pretty nice. And the attack first impression basically like the Golisopod GX, but it's 120 plus 60 more if it was on your bench and became your active. So I actually kind of do like this attack. We can definitely of course knock out things like Reshizard. Uh, hitting 180 is a pretty good number against the non-tag team GXs that are still kind of floating around in the format. And the fact that we have triple acceleration energy does make this attack viable to be powered up. And it has synergy with the ability too because after you discard the triple acceleration energy, you now have free retreat again, which is pretty cool. 
Uh, of course, the big issue is going to be streaming attackers throughout the course of a game since you discard triple acceleration energy. So this guy would need some sort of partner Pokemon if you wanted to power this thing up because I don't think you can build around just this guy alone as an attacker. Let's see the wind pod. Just want to check it out really quick. 10 and your opponent has to attack on a coin flip. Okay. So unfortunately not as good as the old wimp out wind pod, but got to use what we have at this point since the old one is going to be rotating. Let's see, we have Galvantula. 50 to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Apply weakness and resistance, even for bench Pokemon. Okay. That's not too bad, I suppose. Um, I'm not sure how many relevant lightning weak Pokemon we're going to be using in the new format. So not sure if Galvantula is really going to see that much play, but definitely kind of a cool attack. Could be a potentially viable ditto target since this is just a single colorless energy, so pretty splashable. Have to kind of keep an eye out for this card depending on what becomes popular in the meta. Let's see, we have a new Electros line. A couple different Tynos. Let's see if any of these are relevant. Let's see, um, this one's not too bad. Search deck for Lightning and attach it. I mean, it is probably just going to be knocked out, but if we're attacking with Electros potentially, that could be an okay attack the electric discard all lightning energy 30 for each discarded meh and of course we got electros here and if this pokemon is in your hand you have four energy and play for for lightning energy and play i should say use this ability put this pokemon from your hand onto your bench and move as many lightning energy from your pokemon to this pokemon as you like so this is kind of like kind of like tapu coco uh, we're gonna be losing tapu coco gx of course so it's kind of a similar effect. And the attack, of course, is four energy or lightning, triple colorless, 130, your opponent can't retreat next turn. So it's kind of a mediocre attack, but being able to kind of throw this guy down out of nowhere and sometimes force like a seven prize game or something like that could be could be something to kind of keep an eye out for. I think this I think this ability is actually not too hard to fulfill, just because we do have things like Thunder Mountain, we have uh of course, Tap Coco, Prism Star. We have ways to, uh, you know, get this guy into play and attack with it in the same turn. So uh, the ability, it's okay. Not like crazy about it. it. Has has some synergy with the like Vicavolt deck with the Charger Bugs. You can use those to fulfill this as well. So I think that deck kind of dies after the rotation though, just because we lose Stretcher. But nevertheless, I don't know. It, cards okay. I'm not blown away by it, but it's definitely a decent ability. We have a baby Coco. Let's see, Electro Ball 30 for one. Actually, pretty good since we have Electro Powers. So that's something not to, I think, undersell. And the attack, Lightning, Lightning, Cars 100. And if your opponent's active as an Ultra Beast, 100 more, then discard two energy from this Pokemon. So it's a very specific attack. I mean, with Electro Powers, we can probably knock out whatever like Ultra Beast our opponent has. So this is definitely going to have to be, you know, definitely more of a tech Pokemon. Not sure how good this is going to be. Like, think of the Raikou from Shining Legends, just as an example. Hasn't really seen much play. Has a lightning for one attack. Could do 30, and you get an energy out of the discard pile. So I'm not sure how good this is going to be. I mean, we are going to be in a different format. But my knee-jerk reaction is, it's an okay card. Just not sure if it's good enough to actually find space in, into people's decks. And we have Mewtwo and Mewjax. This is going to be the big mascot of the set. So let's take a look at this thing. 270 HP, so pretty tanky Pokemon we have. Ability, this Pokemon can use the attacks of any Pokemon GX and EX on your bench or in your discard pile. But of course, you still need the energy to use each attack. And then its own attack is just a GX attack. Psychic, Psychic, Colorist, 200. And if you have at least one more energy, let's see... Heal all damage from each of your Pokemon. Okay. So, of course, the big thing is going to be the ability. The attack really isn't bad, especially if you're playing this in, like, Malamar or something like that. 200 is an okay amount of damage to hit for, since you do knock out a lot of the, like, non-tag team basic GXs out there. But really, the GX tag is, or I'm sorry, really the ability is the thing that's worth talking about. So, I think it's actually a really, really good ability. Think of something like Marshadow GX, which has seen a bunch of play since it's come out in both the expanded and standard formats, just because it can copy, uh, you know, the attacks of Pokemon in your discard pile. Now, of course, both these Pokemon are a little bit different. Marshadow is limited to copying basic attacks in your discard pile. 
whereas Mew and Mewtwo here can copy exclusively GX attacks from your bench or discard pile. And one thing that's important to note, it does not specify basics. So this means if we do like throw away some, uh, you know, stage two GXs into our discard pile somehow, we can, you know, just reuse their abilities or I'm sorry, reuse their attacks with this thing. So this actually can be a more effective way of attacking with stage two and stage one GXs. Uh, since you can just maybe use something like Ingo and Emmett to throw them into the discard pile or Mysterious Treasure, and you can, you know, make use of them with Mewtwo. So that is definitely going to be an option. And I think another thing too is maybe just playing this in like something like Reshizard or Picaram just to kind of cover your type deficiencies, uh, especially in the case against Picaram, being able to be psychic to hit fighting weak Pokemon for weakness is pretty good. And also, like with Reshizard being so dominant in the current format, if that continues and people are still like trying to play a lot of water Pokemon to counter that, this can allow you to effectively still use the attacks of Reshizard without being fire type, which is pretty cool. So I think this card is really, really good. I'm not sure if you're going to build an entire deck around this, but you theoretically can just because you can just throw a bunch of Pokemon into the discard or set them on your bench and give your Mew and Mewtwo kind of a toolbox of different attacks to pull from. But I expect this to be more of like a one of that you're going to see kind of in the same vein that we've seen Marshadow pop up before. Uh, so that's kind of the use I'm going to see for this card. Definitely a good card. You're definitely going to, I think, see this uh, see play, though. We have Executor and Execute. See, 180, discard your hand. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, thank you. I mean, you can play, like, Zep Strika or something like that uh, to make sure that you're never stuck with, like, a dead hand. The fact that we lose a Ranguru is actually pretty bad because you could just, like, instruct to refresh your hand after every time you attack with this thing. But yeah, that's pretty bad in this post rotation format, I think. That's gonna be a pass. Otherwise, honestly, not a completely terrible attack. Uh, you can just do 180 every turn with like Malamars and things like that, but not in this format. So here we have Jinx. Once during a turn, you may move a damage counter from one of your Pokemon to another one of your Pokemon. So that's kind of okay, I suppose. Um, I mean, we've had Damage Mover, hasn't really seen any play, but also it's an item. Jinx is a Pokemon. It can usually be more easily searched out since we still have things like Treasure, Communication, etc. Um, this could be relevant depending on the metagame that we have, like at turning some of those crucial two-hit knockouts into three-hit knockouts by moving the single damage counter, especially since we're losing Choice Band and Kukui, there's going to be much fewer modifiers, so you're going to more reliably know what you're going to be hit with, or like for what amount of damage. So this could be relevant going into this new post-rotation format, maybe for mirror matches and things like that, but um, eh, you know, I can see a world where it sees play. Not groundbreaking by any means, though. Let's see, we're getting some more of the baby Pokemon here. We have Why Not? When during return, flip a coin of heads, choose one of your opponent's or a card from your opponent's hand without looking, your opponent reveals and shuffles it into her deck, and your turn now ends. So continuing the terrible mechanic that we've gotten from the other baby Pokemon uh, from Unbroken Bonds, your turn ends on this coin flip no matter what. And unfortunately for Why Not, this I think might actually even be like the worst of these abilities, because you're choosing a card from random, putting it in your opponent's deck, so for all you know, it could be a really pointless card that isn't even that great. Uh, I think even if this was choose the card, I still think this card probably wouldn't see play, but I almost feel like this is kind of a spit in the face that we don't even get to, to choose the card. So unfortunately, why not's pretty bad. Latios GX is up next. This is another one that kind of got revealed a little bit ahead of time here, but it's 170 HP ability. If you have four or less Pokemon play, this Pokemon can't attack. Very interesting. Then it's attack for Psychic, double colorless. During your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon can't be damaged by attacks from tag team Pokemon. So that's actually pretty nice. I do like that. And the GX attack for a Psychic until the end of well, until the end of the game. Okay, that's actually pretty impactful. Your opponent can't use a GX attack. So uh, this is kind of an interesting card we have here. One thing that's important to note is that these cards are still released in Japan in a format where uh, they don't have a rotation yet, so it's very interesting because this Latios basically reads, hey, you have to put down Guzma targets if you want to attack with this. Like in Japan's format, right now they still have Guzma, Ultra Ball, DC, etc. So 
that this would actually be kind of a bad ability, but in the pre-rotation format, but in the post-rotation format, whenever we get this, the ability is a lot less relevant because we're not going to have Guzma anymore. Attack cost normally would be annoying as well, but since this is going to be attacking for psychic energy, that means we can actually still abuse Malamar here, making this a half-decent attacker. So I actually really do like this attack. I think this is definitely a one of consideration in Malamar decks just because tag teams are so powerful right now. Uh, this might be a very powerful Pokemon to maybe potentially shut them out of the game since we aren't going to have Guzma. I think the only thing we really have is going to be Custom Catcher and like the Nine Tails uh, that we got back in Team Up, I believe it was. So our like, like gusting type of effects are going to be very limited. So I actually think I do like this card just as kind of a one of. Uh, for those reasons. Let's see, we have a new Behem. Another Pokemon we don't see too often here. But let's see, 80 HP, Psychic for 1, Triple Colors, 90, Shuffle this Pokemon, all cards attached to it back in your deck, and your opponent can't play item cards next turn. That's actually pretty cool. So we don't really have a, a reliable form of item lock lately, so this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, the fact this is triple acceleration energy uh, that we're going to be using for this thing and we put it back into the deck instead of discarding it is actually pretty relevant. Now of course the big downside to something like this as opposed to Quaking Punch that we've seen on Seismitoad EX in the past is that we do put this Pokemon back into the deck every turn and we have to you know set this thing up over and over again but this I think actually isn't that terrible. We still do have Mysterious Treasure which is one of the best forms of search in this new format. So the fact that we are a Pokemon that can abuse that, I think makes this kind of relevant here. Uh, we still have Zubstrika to kind of dig through our deck every turn as well. Uh, the big thing is we do have to choose a Pokemon to promote in between knockouts, which is pretty annoying. And we are losing Hoopa, which is definitely one of our better Pokemon that we normally would want to promote between turns. We will still have Shuckle GX, not really sure how great that is, uh, but you could do that. You could do something like Weezing, so I have to see what the ideal Pokemon we promote between turns is going to be, but I definitely like this attack. I think this attack is good enough, but I think we have enough support to actually uh, stream this guy every turn. So I, I think this card is actually pretty cool. I have to keep an eye out for this one. Let's see, we have Aegislash. I do remember thinking this card was cool. So let's take a look at the pre-evolutions first. Hone Edge, search your deck for an item. That's actually pretty cool. You can search your deck for like a treasure or like a Dusk Stone, potentially, since we do have to remember Dusk Stone will allow us to evolve our Doublades into Aegislash. Let's see. Okay, the trade off this one's 50 HP, good attack. This one's 70 HP, bad attack, and bad retreat cost. So we do have to kind of keep that in mind. But I think I do like this 50 HP one. Let's see, we have Doublade 30. Damage isn't affected by weakness or resistance. That's not very relevant. And then we have Age Slash, 130 HP. Really do like the art on this thing too. That looks really nice. Really good quality, like 3D artwork. I know a lot of people have been critical of like the CG art before, but I think this is like super, super good here. <laughs> like, <laughs> call me a geek for this, but like just looking at the texture on this rock, I'm just like, hmm, that's some good looking art we have there. <laughs> uh, but Psychic type, like I said, really important for this new format. It's one of the few types that actually has a good search option in the form of treasure but the ability if you're knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack put age slash back into your hand and discard all cards attached to it so much like with splash energy in the past or rescue energy of the past uh, that means we do get back the double aids and the hone edge as well so that's a really good ability especially in this format where we don't have rescue stretcher recovery in this format is going to be much clunkier with basically just Brock Grid and Lure Ball being our only options, which really aren't that great. So this is actually a really good ability, I think. And the attack, just for a color synergy, 10 times the amount of items in your discard pile. So kind of like a reverse trash lanch in a way. So uh, instead of our opponent's discard, our damage is based on our own. But we can't do more than 130 damage in this way. So that's kind of annoying that they put that restriction, but 130 is pretty good. That is going to allow us to... Uh, two shot most of the Pokemon in the current format and we do still have spell tag so we can use spell tag to kind of augment our damage output a little bit as well so I think there's actually something here for this card we're going to be playing things like treasures uh, dusk stones maybe even rare candy still to get this thing out and play Pokemon communication so I think this is actually not too hard to get this thing set up and the fact that once you get one of these set up they basically kind of keep recycling themselves throughout the course of a game 
is something that I think makes this card pretty good. And, you know, especially in a format where we have a bunch of three prize attackers, being a single prize attacker or, or a good single prize attacker, that is something that I think is definitely worth pointing out. So I do like the Sage Slash. I'm definitely going to try it out. I'm a sucker for, for Stage 2s. <laughs> uh, so we'll have to see how this thing's going to do, but definitely a card I'm going to keep my eye out for. We have Necrozma. So let's see. 130 HP basic, 30 and 30 reduction. Not too great. Then 100. Plus 60 more if we have a special energy card. So that doesn't seem too great. Uh, we will still have Rainbow Energy in the format, so that's worth pointing out. We still have Unit Energies. So, I don't know. Card seems kind of meh. You can knock out Mew and Mewtwo GX, but there's already other cards that can do the same thing that are better. Like, assuming you're playing this in Malmar, I don't see what world you're playing this over something like Giratina. Uh, I mean, you can knock out things like the Dene GX, just as an example, and some of the basic GXs running around, but I think I would rather just play Giratina overall. Seems pretty bad. We have Onyx and Steelix. And it's actually pretty neat. We, I think this actually might be our first Fighting Steelix that I can recall. I think all of the other ones in my memory have been metal types. So it's actually kind of cool. So let's see. 170 HP, that's super good. For retreat cost, actually pretty good because we can use buff padding. So some good stats going on for us so far here. Fighting 20, attached to Fighting from Discard. So that's not too bad. Getting energy in the discard in this format might be a little bit tricky, though, just without Ultra Ball, but nevertheless, still kind of okay. And then fighting in quadruple color rush. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of energy. 220, and none of your Pokemon can attack during your next turn, including newly brought into play Pokemon. Jeez, okay, that's pretty terrible. If this was, like, just Steelix can attack next turn, I'd be like, fine. This is still, like, somewhat viable just because it sets itself up. You know, fighting, hitting for fighting weakness is pretty good with Pikaram running around, whatever. But yeah, I think the second stipulation of that attack just makes Steelix kind of unplayable. That's a, that's a pass for me, I think. Next up, we have Aerodactyl. Definitely been seeing some talk about this. This is, I think, one of the more height GXs that we have coming out of the set. So, Fossil Pokemon, 210 HP. Fossil Pokemon in particular is really important to note because there is a new stadium that will allow us to get this Aerodactyl into play even on the first turn. So that's something very important to keep track of here. So the ability here says, as long as this Pokemon is your active, the attacks of your opponent's basic Pokemon cost one more energy. So that's actually a really, really insane effect, especially since the format that we look to be in looks to be a very basic dominated metagame so being able to make like reshi's are need five energy to use flare strike is actually really really good i think so this ability is definitely the whole reason why aerodactyl is seeing any talk this is a great ability uh the attack fighting dce does 120 but you guys do have to remember though we don't have double chorus energy anymore so i think this card's actually pretty good in japan's format but i actually think people need to kind of temper their expectations for this card just because in our format we won't have double color synergy as far as we know and this card kind of faces i think the same type of situation that Caracosta is in where the attack really isn't bad but the issue is you always have to commit an additional energy to this aerodactyl meaning you can never start to power up another pokemon so if you are going to play this aerodactyl you definitely need a backup attacker that attacks for a single attachment and that's really i think where aerodactyl is going to struggle so that is the big challenge with this card uh, but let's talk about the gx attack really quick too uh, so 50 times the amount of energy attach your opponent's active. So that's also pretty good because, of course, we're forcing them to need more energy, <laughs> which is pretty nice here. So uh, this is pretty nice, especially after, you know, if we have a turn where we whiff triple acceleration energy, uh, we can use this sometimes. And so it's kind of cool. You have like a two-shotting attack in the form of Rock Smash and then Wild Dive GX. It's going to be like a big one-shotting attack. So this is pretty cool. You hit Pikaron for weakness as well, which is nice. So I definitely like this card, but I think it definitely needs a partner Pokemon in order to be able to get set up. Of course, I think Malamar is going to be a potential option as well. So you can play this kind of in the same way some people play Ultra Necrozma. You play primarily Psychic Energies with, you know, maybe like three to four of these Fighting Energies, maybe a couple of Viridian Forests to help find them when you need to. So I think there are ways to get this thing up and running, but if you're not playing Malamar, I definitely think this needs a partner Pokemon, uh, just because I don't think you're going to be able to actually keep recycling this attack every turn. So 
that's I have some reservations for Aerodactyl, but this ability is super, super good, though. Let's see, we have Heracross. If your opponent used a GX tech during their last turn, shuffle their active Pokemon, all cards, attach you back in your deck. That's actually pretty cute. But overall, I don't think that's, like, too impactful. You know, if, if your opponent's already used their GX attack, they've already gotten the benefit of having this, like, huge board. Like, think of something like Tadbolt GX. They've already gotten, like, all of their energy into play and gotten the effect out of that. Putting that back into their deck is a little less impactful because they've already gotten the benefit of, you know, working so hard to get set up. So I think this card actually isn't that great. Or the first attack I don't think is that great. Uh, tackles kind of like mediocre as well. Uh, even though it is a, just a colorless based attacker, I think Onyx is just generally going to be better because we can one shot Pikaram. So here we have uh, the new Breloom I kind of talked about. So this is going to go hand in hand with the Amoongus that we looked at. Uh, so, of course, Amoongus, it said whenever we have a Pokemon with Spore that comes into play, your opponent's Pokemon is asleep and poison. So I'm actually really happy that the Breloom had Spore because just looking at the uh, Fungus, I was like, Ugh. you know, like, I don't think we can actually abuse this ability that reliably if Fungus is the on only Pokemon that we're going to have with Spore. So this is actually really good that the Breloom has Spore here. So that makes the archetype a little bit better. Okay. So I like that. We're already off to a good start. Being able to attack for grass energy while being a fighting Pokemon is also something I really like because we get all of the benefits of being fighting type like Diancy Prism Star, Martial Arts Dojo, and being able to hit things like Pikaram for weakness while still attacking with a different energy is really cool. That also allows us to potentially run other grass Pokemon that use grass energy and cover a different typing as well. So I really like how they kind of designed this card here. And the attack is just a single grass energy outside of Spore, of course. Uh, single Grass Energy is 30, plus 90 more if your opponent's active is asleep. So, so you can see the synergy they're pushing here with the Breloom and the Amoongus here. Actually, really doesn't seem that bad. Like I said, switching effects and gusting effects are going to be a bit more limited. We lose Escape Rope, we lose Guzma. So I think this type of ability and status condition actually has a much better chance to stick into play. There's also a new Stadium, which we'll look at, that also has synergy with this type of guy. But this is pretty good. You're going to be hitting 120 base, 130 from Poison from the Amoongus. And that's excluding damage modifiers like Diancy, Martial Arts Dojo, etc. So I have to say, I actually do like this kind of combo. This might be a pretty good non-GX uh, duo that we're going to have here. Definitely want to test this thing out whenever it gets released. So yeah, I actually do like this card. This is, I think one of the cooler non-GXs that we're getting in the set. We have Relicant. So it looks like the first tack here is colorless. Search your deck for a trainer, reveal, put into our hand, then shuffle our deck. Eh, kind of meh. Like, this could be like a setup Pokemon potentially, but it just seems kind of kind of lackluster. The other attack, not very good either. Excadrill. Another, a lot of Pokemon we haven't seen in a while coming in this set, which is pretty nice. Let's see. Rototiller, Fighting Energy. Choose four cards from your discard pile. Show them to your opponent. Put them into your deck. Basically like the Lantern we got back in Lost Thunder, I think it was. Might have been Team Up. No, I think it was Lost Thunder, actually. And that hasn't really seen any play, so Excadrill probably won't either. So, pass there. We have Archaeops, another one of the fighting evolution, uh, like, fossil Pokemon. So we do have to remember, this does evolve from Unidentified Fossil, but like I said, there is a new stadium that will allow us to get some of these Pokemon into play a little bit easier. So, 130 HP... Let's see, you turn Color Synergy is 40 and switch this with one of your bench Pokemon and Hyper Beam 80 and discard the energy from your opponent's active. So this is actually a kind of a cool card. I have to say I think I actually like this. This might even be like the, the potential par partner Pokemon for Aerodactyl or even for Caracosta. Just because like I said, those attackers are reliant on triple colorless energy and you are going to need a single energy based attacker, I think, to pivot to at some point. I have to say, I actually think I might like this the most out of all of the fossil Pokemon. I know there's a lot of hype around Aerodactyl, but like I said, I think its attack isn't that reliable in the post-rotation format. And it's actually pretty cool. We're a fighting Pokemon, so we can abuse things like Diancy. We can abuse Martial Arts Dojo. We're a colorless attacker, so our options in terms of like what partner Pokemon we want in our deck are actually pretty up in the air, which I think is cool. And I really like this second attack in particular, just 80 and discard an energy from your opponent's active. That's... That's pretty good, actually. I think people might underestimate how good that is because 
a lot of times, even if your opponent can find the, the replacement energy, they're having to commit energy to a Pokemon that is probably going to get knocked out. Like, assuming you're going to two-shot something with this thing, you're going to swing on them. They're going to be forced to attach another energy to attack, and then maybe on your next turn, you clean up that knockout. So it forces your opponent to keep sinking resources into Pokemon that are going to get knocked out, which is something I think is really cool. I do like this attack. Unfortunately, we are losing Choice Band. I think the damage output might be a little bit low, but we do still have Diancy. It's going to push us up to 100. We have Martial Arts Dojo. We have Shrine. So there are ways to still get this damage output up a little higher. So I'm actually pretty optimistic for this card. I definitely think this is actually one of my more uh, optimistic like attackers that we've had so far. I actually think U-Turn, not terrible either. I do wish this was a little bit more of a beefier attack just because Dawn Fam was a stage one that did the same amount of damage. But I do like this. We can like actually U-Turn into Aerodactyl. And since Aerodactyl has free retreat, we can actually just kind of do that whole type of number. So I actually think that might be, you know, just talking about it out loud here. That might even be one of my more preferred ways to maybe try out the new Aerodactyl. We'll have to see. But I definitely like this, this Archaeops. I think this is one of the more sleeper cards or maybe potentially more overlooked cards uh, in this set so far. So thumbs up for me. I do like this thing. We have Terrakion. Okay, let's see. Fighting DCE, but again, we don't have DCE, so this is probably going to be pretty bad. <laughs> if all of your Pokemon have, or all of your bench Pokemon have damage counters on them, it stacks 150 more. Pretty good amount of damage, but I don't see us really powering this thing up. Not a big fan. Uh, we have another tag team, Mega Sableye and Tyranitar GX. So 280 HP. So this is definitely one of the beefier non waylord based tag teams might actually be i think the the beefiest because i think we have like muck and uh, charizard are 270 that's kind of a w where like most of the tankier tag teams hover around so this guy actually has a ton of hp which is really nice but both of its attacks just looking at these don't give me much hope both of them are five energy each <laughs> at the very least but let's see the first one 210 if your opponent's active as a GX or EX and is knocked out by damage from this attack, take one more prize card. Okay, that's actually, like, debatably good enough to commit this amount of energy to. But, like, Dark has no energy acceleration. <laughs> so how are you even going to get this thing up and running? Like, I guess we have a Darkrai Prism still, but even... But that's putting the energy on Darkrai. We have Sharpedo... But the issue is, like, with the Dark Energy Acceleration, it puts all the energy on those Pokemon. And we do have things like Nanu you can play, and Energy Switch, I believe, is still legal as well after rotation. So, like, there's, like, kind of ways you can get this going, but it's super clunky. This, If there's a way to actually accelerate this energy, I would maybe actually be excited for this. Uh, but the GX attack, same attack cost, 250, so another, like, one-hit knockout-oriented attack, which is cool. And if you have five additional energy attached to this Pokemon, discard 15 cards from the top of your opponent's deck. That's okay. <laughs> like, there's a lot of shock value built into this Pokemon. But, like, it's kind of a chore even to get eight energy on a Magikarp Waylord. How, how are we getting ten energy on Mega Sableye and Tyranitar GX? Like, in Expanded, I can potentially see a world where you can kind of pull that off. But, Jesus, how are you ever going to do this? in standard that's this is such a meme card this kind of reminds me of like a lot of the charizard cards we see print a lot of times the charizards have these like really huge one hit knockout oriented attacks and but the attacks are just like impossible to power up so this kind of reminds me of that these attacks are actually pretty good but the issue is the attack costs are very hefty and there's no way to actually fulfill them effectively so yeah this card's pretty bad but definitely a hilarious pokemon uh, if you can ever get this thing going, you're definitely going to uh, pull out some, some crazy wins probably <laughs> with this thing. But probably, overall, pretty bad card. Let's see, we got Sableye, 10. And if this Pokemon is by, damaged by an attack during your opponent's next turn, put 8 damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. So that's kind of cute. I don't think that's going to be too great. I mean, I guess you could play like Shrine of Punishment, potentially. And... Uh, I don't know if there was a way to actually scale this damage output to being closer to like 60 70 80 then I'd maybe like this but 10 is just a little too bad I think got Drapion see triple colorless flip four coins 50 for each heads if two are heads your opponent's active is now poisoned 
it's like not completely terrible for triple acceleration energy, but we do lose the flip teeny uh, that we've had, so this card gets much worse. Even with that, probably not a great card. Let's see, we have Lipard and Purloin. Oh, this actually does kind of catch my eye really quick on the Purloin. It does have an attack will allow us to discard a tool card from one of our opponent's Pokemon. Unfortunately, we are losing Field Blower and Rotation, and we might have to go back to playing like really bad forms of tool removal. Like back before we got Field Blower, some people were playing things like, uh, I think it was Sinchino, or it might have been Minchino, I forget which one. They were playing things like that and like Beedrill EX to discard tools. We were in that like bad of shape to remove tools, and we're kind of going back to that. We still do have Faba, but we also have this thing, I guess, <laughs> if we do want to go that route. But here we have Lipard. Let's take a look at this thing. So 100 HP. Let's see, 1 for 40. Like, not atrocious, but second attack. Dark DC does 90 during your post next turn. Their basic Pokemon can't use any attacks, or their basic active Pokemon can't use any attacks. That's actually pretty interesting. We do lose double colorless energy, so this is going to be pretty bad for our format. And I'm really curious, like, the wording on this. Does it mean their current active Pokemon can't use any attacks? Or is it going to be, like, whatever Pokemon comes into their active slot as well can't use this? Because if your opponent can just retreat and get out of this, this attack team is pretty bad. But if this applies to whatever their active Pokemon is going to be, then this gets, I think, much better. So we'll have to see how this is going to translate. But between that and the fact that we can't use triple acceleration, or I'm sorry, we can't use double car synergy, and we have to use triple acceleration makes this card a bit worse. So we'll have to see what this translates to, but right now, kind of cautiously pessimistic, actually. Let's see, we have Scrafty up next. 20 plus 20 for each of your remaining prize cards. So this is our first attacker of the game. So gonna be hitting for 180, not too terrible, I guess, but we lose choice ban, so we can't even, like, knock out stage 1 GXs. And we lose double color synergy, so... Eh? I don't know. <laughs> Car doesn't seem that great. We have Eveltal. Let's take a look at this. 130 HP, 1 energy, 20. 20 more if there's a stadium, so it's, like, okay, but there's not, like, anything we really want to hit for dark weakness, so... I'm not a huge fan of that attack. Shadow Impact, Dark Dark Horus, 120, put 3 on one of your Pokemon. Kind of just like a worse version of Giratina. Probably a pass from you guys. Let's see, next that we have Whimsicott here. Stage 1, whenever you play this Pokemon from hand to evolve one of your Pokemon. Search your deck for a card, put it into your hand. Okay, so it's like the old Roserade back from Dragons Exalted. Roserade saw like a very fringe amount of play. Like whenever the card first became legal for like the the regional that happened after that i remember it popped up in like a couple of dark ride decks but outside of that it really never saw too much play so i'm not sure if this will either uh i mean if you're gonna be playing whimsicott gx i guess you theoretically could play at least one of these just because you already played cottonese you probably already played ditto so this seems like a instant one of at the least for decks like that just trying to think of decks outside of that that are going to use this uh, I think it's going to be kind of the same situation as Roserade. Kind of awkward sometimes to, like, fit this in. Uh, like, a lot of times, you would just rather play Jirachi. That's going to be more consistent. Uh, it's a basic, you know, the effect isn't as powerful, but you can reuse it throughout the course of a game. So, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Whimsicott here. It's definitely a good ability. I just think outside of Whimsicott GX, not sure what deck is going to be looking to play this, though. And... The Cottony, I do want to point out, it does have an attack draw card, so that's actually pretty cool. This might be the Cottony of choice going forward. See, we have the Dene here. Pretty cute little artwork. 20, and you may draw until you have 6 in hand. So this could theoretically be like a starter Pokemon if we do see the return of starter Pokemon into the game. But outside of that, probably pretty bad. And we have new Dragonite and Dragonite GX. Actually, kind of excited to talk about these. I do. These were another like set of cards that got revealed before the entire set got posted online. Uh, I do want to point out the Dratini. I do kind of like this one that we have here, this Dratini. So 10, and then prevent all effects of attacks, coin damage on this Pokemon on a coin flip. So that seems pretty good. I do like that. Uh, this one does have... 
an ability. It gives you free retreat if you have water energy, but more than likely you're going to be relying on lightning energy since you have Volkner, I think. So that seems a little bit better, but I don't know. Uh, I guess you will be probably playing lightning and water energy with the new Dragonite, so this will be a consideration as well, but right now I think I do like this one out of the two. Let's see, Dragonair doesn't look too great. Then both Dragonites, I think, are pretty interesting. The first one's kind of like a kind of like a pseudo reprint of Vigvol. It's not quite as good, but it's kind of similar. And I do like the art on this thing. Definitely very, very nice. But 160 HP, pretty cool. Very tanky for a non-GX. But has this ability once during your turn before you attack me. Attach a water and lightning from your hand to your Pokemon any way that you like. So, like I said, very similar to Vicvolt, but being from hand is, I think, a good bit worse than uh, getting the energy from your deck because this forces you to have other cards, maybe like Viridian Forest or uh, Energy Spinner, to be able to find these things. Uh, you know, being able to accelerate them out of the deck is substantially better, and I kind of wish they would have gone that route. But nevertheless, it's energy acceleration, and you can get two energies at that, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's attack, I guess we can point out 170, discard three energy. Uh, 170, not that great of a number anymore just because we lose Lele in the rotation, but we will still have the Denes running around, but at the same time we lose Guzma, so I'm not even sure if you're going to get too much value out of this attack. But then Dragonite GX, 250 HP. Let's see, first attack, Dragon Claw for Water Lightning Colorist, 130. So you guys can see the synergy there already. You can use the other Dragonite, get your Water and Lightning Energy in play, and then attach it one more from hand, and you're ready to go. And then it's other attack for <laughs> quintuple colorless energy. There's 270, and you discard three energy from this Pokemon. So this is the attack I think that is really worth talking about because even though at a glance this seems like an insane cost, you can go with the other Dragonite, attach your uh, lightning and water energy, and then attach your triple colorless from hand to fulfill the rest of the attack. And triple acceleration energy naturally discards itself. So the discarding effect from this attack isn't even really that relevant as a result. So I think this card's actually pretty cool. The big downside, of course, is the fact that not even that you need to discard three energy, but the fact that the other Dragonite accelerates the energies from hand means that every turn you're going to need, well, I shouldn't say every turn, but ideally the first turn you attack with this, you're gonna need a lightning and a water energy in hand and a triple acceleration energy in hand uh, to be able to make use of this thing. So that is pretty annoying. For that reason, maybe there's other attackers that we could potentially use with Dragonite. I'm not sure. Uh, the fact that the second attack is all colorless energy makes me a little bit optimistic because we could potentially play something like Malamar, maybe. Though I'm not sure if we're going to have room for all of that nonsense in the same deck. Uh, that is definitely an option. Uh, maybe even Porygon Z. But I guess if we're playing a stage 2, the other Dragonite is probably, unfortunately, going to be our best option. So I do actually like this Dragonite. It can knock out basically any of the tag teams outside of Magikarp Waylord and uh, the ridiculous <laughs> Mega Sable Eye Tyranitar GX. So I think this has some degree of potential. It might be just too clunky to get going, but we'll have to see. I am optimistic, especially since we do have Treasure. That's one of the, you know, Dragon's one of the, the few types that has good uh, searching options right now. So I think this card has some potential. Oh, and we didn't even talk about the GX attack. Just draw until you have 10 in hand, and you can discard as many cards as you like first. So this can be good if we don't have what we need to get going. We can just kind of set up our hand for next turn sometimes. So not a bad GX attack either. Next we have Noivern, and something that I'm actually stoked on. We finally have a Dragon Noibat. <laughs> and that seems like such a random thing to point out, but this is... Kind of relevant in terms of Noivern GX, even though we are losing it in standard, we do still have it in expanded. And Noivern is actually a pretty decent card in that format since we have double dragon energy over there. And I've actually been a huge fan of Noivern GX. I even played it at Roanoke Regionals last season. And I actually thought it was like a super good play for that particular tournament in particular. Uh, but the big challenge, and I think honestly the only like big inherent downside to the deck is that the Noi bats up until this point have been colorless, which means you can't put double dragon energy on them. So the fact that we have a dragon type Noi bat actually kind of overcomes that inherent disadvantage the deck has had. If Noivern does see any play, this is definitely going to be the best Noi bat going forward in Expanded. Uh, I think Noivern has some other challenges that it faces. Like I think it's probably just kind of a, a badly positioned GX in the current Expanded format, but nevertheless, 
Uh, if you do want to play Noivern, this is definitely going to be the Noibat that you're going to want to use going forward. So stoked to see this thing, actually. One of my favorite cards in the set for that reason. And then we do have a new Noivern as well. And I love Noivern as a Pokemon. I think this has always been, I think, one of the best Pokemon of this gen. And I love the artwork on this thing. This guy looks so cool. I don't remember this card being too great. Let's take a look. It does have free retreat, which is pretty nice. And the first attack is basically just the flying flip attack from Tapu Koko that we're losing. But this one's going to be for just a color of synergy. And of course, 20 spread to everything. And it's actually hilarious. They say don't apply weakness and resistance for bench Pokemon. But nothing is weak or resistant to dragon. So almost kind of like a useless bit of text there. And then we have Dragon Pulse for Psychic Dark Colors 120. And discard the top card of our deck. Not really a great attack, but the first attack is good. Havering Free Retreat is good. Uh, we don't have Tap Coco anymore. We don't have Latios from Shining Legends anymore. So this is one of our really our only like spread options that we have since we do have mysterious treasure we can actually search this guy out pretty easily as well so it's it's a maybe i don't know i'm kind of biased towards noivern so uh i have a soft spot for this so we'll see how it goes but i actually am much more excited about the noibat than the noivern <laughs> but i really do like the art on this thing Let's see we have taurus here call for family just search deck for one basic not too great Let's see, we have Slacking. Let's see what Slack Out does. During your opponent's next turn, if they attach an energy to the Pokemon affected by this attack, their turn ends. Oh, okay. That's actually kind of cool. Uh, that can maybe buy you a turn while you're trying to get set up, so that's really not too bad. Uh, Slack Off doesn't look too great. There, Vigoroth doesn't look too great. So we have Slacking. It's another card that got revealed ahead of this set, I do remember. Uh, 180 HP, which is great. Four retreat cost, also great because we can abuse buff padding. But the ability, if this Pokemon is your active and damaged by an opponent's attack, put four damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. So kind of like a pseudo burst balloon uh, in the form of this attack. And the attack it has here, four colorless energy, which is so annoying, especially without double colorless energy. 100 plus 100, well, it's 100, and you may do 100 more damage. If you do, during your opponent's next turn, uh, this Pokemon takes 100 more damage from your opponent's attacks. So that's kind of bad, but there is a new tool card that will kind of synergize with this. But the fact that this is like 4 energy, I think is just probably, probably a little bit too bad, unfortunately. Because there's not really a reliable way to get this thing powered up, I think. Let's see, so we have Gumshoes. 90 if your opponent's active it is a gx reacts does 30 instead what <laughs> what that is that is so terrible like why i i think that kind of speaks to pokemon's current like design philosophy is like let's make like gx's and tag teams super broken and make non-tag teams and non-gx's completely irrelevant <laughs> like i feel like this attack completely summarizes like the state of this game uh so yeah terrible attack too See, we have a Ranguru. Choose Pokemon from your hand, put it face down, have your opponent guess its type. If they guess correct, your opponent draws four. If not, you draw four. Return that Pokemon to your hand. Okay, that's, I mean, it's kind of a hilarious attack. Definitely pretty fun, like in a pre-release, but pretty terrible as far as competitive viability goes. And we reached the end of our Pokemon here. We have Kamala, 90 HP basic. The ability of this Pokemon remains asleep between turns. Place six damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon. So that's actually pretty relevant if we can put our Kamala asleep here. Then the attack puts itself to sleep. Okay. So that is interesting. But are we really attacking with Kamala to just put six damage counters on our opponent's active between every turn? Like the issue is getting... Like ideally we would have... A Pokemon like Archeops to switch into Kamala and then it becomes asleep whenever it enters the active. That would be our ideal situation. We do have a new stadium that will keep us asleep or help keep us asleep, but the problem is getting asleep in the first place. So that seems cool if we get an effect like that, but right now that doesn't seem very good without that. But definitely cool if we can fulfill this ability some way. And so yeah, we reached the end of the Pokemon. Let's see our trainer cards. These are definitely pretty important because 
uh, you know, we're losing a lot of really important things in the rotation. So I've kind of been like having fingers crossed that we're going to get some very key like engine and consistency cards from this set to kind of fulfill like the gaps that uh, rotation is leaving. Let's take a look. We have great potion. Heal 50 from a G from your active GX. Why would you make this card? <laughs> like, why not print heal 50 from your active stage 2 or something like that? Like, come on. GXs aren't the ones that need support. We need non-GXs, specifically evolutions, that need support. If this was like heal, act heal 50 from your active, like, stage 1 or stage 2 GX, I'd be on board. But this is so dumb. Like, why are they printing cards like this? Good card. I, I actually do think this card is pretty solid. Um, but... It's just a card that should not exist. I really can't stand when they keep giving like big basics this type of support. Stadium Navigator. Let's see, flip two coins for each head. Search deck for a stadium. Reveal put it to our hand. So this actually could be good if you're playing a deck with like multiple types of stadiums. And also we do have the new like fossil stadium, which we'll get to shortly. So this could be a way at finding that on the first turn, making sure we can get it out as soon as possible. So it seems okay. Uh, it's not a card you'll see in every deck, but um, uh, this even could be like a Nine Tails target. Like if a low Nine Tails GX starts to see some more play, uh, you will be able to grab this since you can't grab your stadiums. So actually, don't mind this as a one of in those types of decks either. Another unidentified fossil reprint makes sense. And here, this is the card that has synergy with the slacking that we just looked at. So it's a tool card, and you discard at the end of our opponent's next turn. If the Pokemon this card is attached to is your active and takes 180 or more damage from opponent's attack, put 10 damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. So that's actually kind of cute there. So of course, the idea with slacking is you do the 100 extra damage, for, force them to do 100 more to you, and you're ideally going to activate Giant Bomb here. So between the Giant Bomb, between the ability on slacking, you get some extra damage counters in play as well, which is kind of the whole synergy. Out, I mean, slacking is kind of a meme. I don't see that card being too good. But outside of that, I mean, there might be some use for this type of thing. Taking 10 damage counters is something not to be undersold. Like, So for example, if you're a deck that is reliant on two hit knockouts, if you're going against a deck that is based on one hit knockouts, playing something like this actually does basically net you an extra free turn of getting damage into play without attacking, which actually can kind of pull you ahead in the prize race a bit. And so we don't have Guzma anymore to get around this. We don't have Escape Rope. So I actually think Giant Bomb might have some potential. So it's definitely kind of a bit gimmicky. Your, your opponent can just not attack, or they can still play things like Custom Catcher potentially. But I do think this card actually is like kind of decent. So I'm going to keep my eye out for this one. And we're getting into some supporters. Misty's Request. So this is the Misty card that the Lapras could get out of the discard pile. And you search your deck for three supporters, reveal them, put them into our hand. So this doesn't seem that good. This is a pretty slow effect. I think if you're going to play something like this, Steven's Resolve is just generally better. But this does have some synergy in the like Slowpoke Psyduck type of deck because Misty can grab you supporters to do more damage with the Slowpoke Psyduck. But I think that deck's just kind of a meme. Don't really think this card is very good outside of that. We have Channeler. Removes all effects of attacks on you and your Pokemon. So it's kind of like a Pokemon Ranger reprint. So that means like if the Behem that we looked at earlier uh, attacks us and we're item locked, we can just play Channeler and remove those effects and allow us to continue playing items. Or even think of something like Reshiram Charizard GX if we Flare Strike. Normally we can't use Flare Strike on the following turn, but with Channeler we can actually remove that effect and allow us to use it multiple times in a row. So I think this card will see play. It, it, it's a good card. It, it'll see the same type of play Pokemon Ranger did. Uh, we do lose Tapu Lele, however, so finding Chandler might be a little bit more difficult than it previously would have, but still, I would expect to see this card see Fringe play much in the same way that Pokemon Ranger has. So, decent card, just a very, very specific use, though. We have Blue Strategy, okay. So, whenever this turn is over, draw cards until you have eight. So that's kind of interesting. It's kind of like a tropical beach style effect. It is a little bit slow though. Like if you're playing a supporter, you probably want to draw cards on your current turn. I mean, there are going to be times when you don't need much to have like an effective turn. And so sometimes you might be able to take a turn off from playing a normal supporter to play blues. 
So it's it's kind of okay, I guess. I really wish this was at the end of your opponent's next turn, draw until you have eight, because then they can't judge you. Or play something like a Marshadow, though we won't have Marshadow in the coming format, but Judge is probably going to be our best example here. So it would feel really bad to use this as your supporter and then just get judged. So if you're already kind of foregoing your supporter for your turn, I think this would have been much more fair to have this be at the end of your opponent's uh, turn, basically coming back into your turn. So it's an interesting card. I'm not sure what application there is for this thing, but I don't know. It seems kind of slow. My knee-jerk reaction is that it's not that great. So we have a couple stadiums here. This is going to be the like Sleep Forest, or Slumber Forest, or the Sleep Stadium I kind of alluded to earlier here. Flip two coins instead of one for sleep in between turns. If either of them is Tails, that Pokemon is still asleep. So like I said, Guzma is going to be going. Scape Rip is going to be going. So getting out of uh, status conditions does actually become a little bit harder. And with this stadium that we have, I actually think that status conditions might be kind of on the rise. We have the new Amoongus and Breloom. So I actually think this card seems pretty good. So I like this. And this is the like Fossil Stadium I kind of mentioned as well. So once during each player's turn, that player may search the deck for up to two cards that evolve from an unidentified Fossil and play them onto their bench. Then that player shuffles their deck and their turn ends. So this is actually really cool because the big challenge to all the fossil cards is always just getting them like set up because they are an item card, which is, <laughs> you know, a little bit clunky. So we can actually just on the first turn get Aerodactyls into play immediately and then end our turn. So the big downside, however, is that our turn ends after we use this, which means we can't attach to those Pokemon. And like I kind of mentioned with Aerodactyl, I think that is going to be one of the big challenges with that card. And for that reason, you might still have to run regular unidentified fossils that way you can get an attachment on that pokemon while also getting some of these other pokemon in play so i do think this is a good card and anything that can overcome the challenges that the fossil mechanics normally present is definitely going to be i think pretty strong so i definitely like this thing and i believe the last of the new cards is going to be weak guard energy that we have here so this card provides one colorless energy and the pokemon this card is attached to has no weakness so this is kind of an interesting card that we have here. I don't know how to feel about it because I think of something like Warp Energy just as an example that we're losing in rotation. The effect of it really isn't too bad, but there's not too many decks that want to attach just a single colorless energy. Most decks want to attach an actual colored energy. And the decks that do require colorless energy are usually double colorless energy based attackers. So finding the deck that wants this I think is a little bit tricky. Uh, the one that does come to mind for me is going to be something like Porygon Z, just because you can attach this in addition to multiple other energies in the same turn. So if we ever do see a deck based around Porygon Z, this actually seems pretty good because we can uh, effectively eliminate the weakness of a lot of the tag team Pokemon, which is something that's pretty good. Giving up three prizes and eliminating your own weakness is, I think, pretty advantageous. So outside of that, I'm not sure if you're going to see this pop up in the designated, like, traditional tag team decks. Like, are you going to play this in Rushy's Art? And eh, maybe not, just because you do need to abuse things like Welder, just as an example. But the effect, I think, is good enough to where it is a consideration. But right now, for me, I think Porygon Z, if that does ever kind of, like, take off, I think this will be kind of the home for that. So it's an okay card, just I'm not sure what deck is going to abuse this yet. And that's going to be it for all the new cards, guys. The only other ones that we've gotten revealed are going to be some of the reprints. Most likely, these will be promos given out at regionals and league cups, much like the other recent promos. We have Palpad here. Oh, we have Poke Gear, kind of a cool take on Poke Gear. Mysterious Treasure, and this thing actually looks really cool. I definitely expect this to be one of the more sought after promos. And then Sightseer as well. So yeah, guys, that's going to be it for Miracle Twins. Some of my first impressions here. Set seems okay. There's nothing I see coming out in this that's just like the like absolute unequivocal like best card in format. There's like nothing like Reshizard in here where it's like, okay, that's going to be the new deck. Uh, like even Mew Mewtwo GX, which is really good, I think is more of like a tech Pokemon. It's not, I think, like a main attacker in every deck type of thing. Uh, just let's just scroll through the set again just to quickly recap i do like both stadiums uh, i actually really like the breloom 
like a Moongus style deck in general, I really want to try that out whenever it gets released. Um, both of the fossil like support cards, like the Stadium Navigator and the Fossil Stadium, are good. Great Potion is unfortunately, I think, a good card. Let's see here, what Pokemon did we like? Uh, you know, I got some love for the Noibat. This is one of my favorite non GXs in the set. <laughs> So I really do like that. The Dragonites are okay. Let's see. Nothing for dark Pokemon. Archaeops, I think this is definitely actually one of the better fossil Pokemon. I think this is debatably just as good or better than the Aerodactyl, actually. Uh, Breloom, definitely good. I shouldn't say definitely good, but I think this card is solid. Aerodactyl, I think, has a ton of potential. Uh, like I said, I think the attack cost on it is its big challenge. It's going to have to overcome, but nevertheless, the ability is super busted on it. Uh, Age of Slash, another one of my personal favorites in the sets. There's actually a couple of good non-GX attackers in here. So even despite printing some cancerous cards like Great Potion and like just general GX tag team support, I do like that they did give us some good non-GXs. Behem, another solid one, I think. Latios, maybe a good one of for Malamar. Uh, Mew and Mewtwo, we kind of already said that's going to be a good one. Glyspod's kind of okay. Not not one of my favorites, though. Caracosta, another one's kind of okay. Let's see. <laughs> Slowpoke and Psyduck, absolute trash, but it's, it's, it's a hilarious card, though. <laughs> um, Levani, not that great. And yeah, we're back up to the beginning. So actually, most of my favorite cards were non-GX Pokemon, which it m might hopefully bode well for the set whenever it gets released. Like I said, guys, this is going to be released whenever our new poster rotation format goes into effect, and this will be in our Unified Minds set. So also, you know, what did what did you guys think about this set? Definitely sound off in the comment section. Did you think I was a little bit too harsh on anything, or maybe you know not harsh enough on certain cards? And definitely let us know down below in the comments what you think about these cards. But as always, guys, if you did enjoy this content, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you can, consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up some merch from our online store, rarecandytcg.com. It would mean a lot. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.